gonna start putting everything together. First thing you're gonna wanna do is basically reverse everything that you just did. We are gonna start with this. Um, let's see, yep. Okay. We're gonna start with that. We're just gonna pop it in until it locks. You'll see a little part where it locks. Right there, perfect. Next, we're gonna take again the Dremel. We're gonna go over here. This is where voltage regulator is gonna go. This whole part acts like a heat sink. Just for safety measures, I wanna take all the paint out. Next, we're gonna go ahead and take this part in. We're just gonna slide that through. Perfect. Okay. And then we're gonna drop that in. So it sits in nicely. And then we're just gonna sit that there. Now I'm not gonna do it because the cord is just fine, but if you wanna cut this out and replace that with an IEC, uh, or female IEC, then you can just use any IEC cord. You don't have to worry about your power adapter ever again. A fun little modification, maybe use techniques for listening pleasure as opposed to DJing with time code vinyl, is getting rid of this and replacing it with an all digital one. This emits quite a bit of noise which is picked up by the tone arm and of course comes out of your uh, speaker. So lose this one, upgrade to an all digital one and it does make a difference from what I've been told. Don't take my word for it because I haven't done that upgrade. I have no need, it works just fine. Or this works just fine. So now I'm gonna go ahead and work on the second part of the power supply board. I've already done this part here where the cord comes out. I've bolted down the power supply. Now I'm doing the power supply bezoard. Last, you'll notice that we currently have two screws left. These two screws are for the voltage regulator. Do not, under any circumstances, let the voltage regulator go there dry. You want to use some lube. Don't stick it in dry. That's what she said. So the type of lube you're going to use is called silicone based compound, aka heat sink compound. This is not the same stuff that goes into a, a processor, that's more of a grayish type. There's a little bit of a chemical difference, but essentially it's the same type, but this is different. You don't have to get the most expensive stuff, you just need you know, a little $2 tube from Radio Shack. This also is uh, somewhat adhesive. So you can just let it sit there for a second. We're gonna go line that up there. And now that we have lubed it up, we're gonna screw it in. This video, set of videos could be a drinking game if that's what she said. All right, and we are in. Everything is all done there. Last thing that we need to do for the top part, slide it in. You'll notice that I use a yoga mat simply because I do not want for this to scrape anything at all. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna flip this baby upside down. We're gonna... There are some mods that of course I'm skipping that you can do. One of the uh, mods that you can do is opening this up right here, okay? And you can replace these LEDs with whatever color you want for your strobe. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and do a little pop-up light. You can also switch the LEDs out for the pop-up light. Again, I chose not to do that. I wasn't really too concerned with it. Uh, but I will let you know that if you do decide to switch the LEDs out on the pop-up light, uh, you do need to add the proper resistor because you will blow the LED or you can blow the entire circuit in there. This is not the proper resistor for the LED. I'm talking one in... Uh, inside of here or somewhere in there on the way. The other thing also to think about is that if you don't do it correctly and if you use too thick of cables, as this pops up, you can destroy the entire mechanism. So if you don't know what you're doing, stay out of it. To me, it's not that I don't know what I'm doing, it's just it's not worth my time at the moment. Okay, so that's gonna go right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock this in. Right here. We're gonna go ahead and 
slide this sucker in and uh, one of the things that I realized as I'm putting it in is that that is way too high up there so not a big deal I'm just gonna go ahead and take this down about a quarter of an inch now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go ahead and lift up this part of the board just a bit and have that go from underneath there when I first opened the turntable it was to the top but I don't like that Whoop. I'm gonna go ahead and take this part over here and slide it inside and I'm gonna take this cable and lock it in beautiful now we're gonna go ahead and take this upside down again and we're just gonna go ahead and put that in place so it's gonna sit there like that and I have the screw that I just need to put in hmm. haven't had a chance to really start buying or to buy the pieces that I'm gonna glue over here I'm going to get the ones that are all black from the 1210s. So we have that. I'm going to take the cable that it goes with, slide it through there. And voila, ceci vous nous. Next, we're going to put the tone arm in. So we're just going to slide that sucker through. Okay. Want that in just like that. And again, very gently, you're going to want to get a pillow or something and just get it in there. Okay, now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and take this ground. And you can loop it from underneath, but I loop it on top just because the last one was pinched off. So I'm going to take it there. We're just going to screw it in. Now, I know it's kind of hard to see, but I just took one of the screws. If you remember, it went right into where the fader, or one of the screws for the pitch fader. All right. Um, that's something sticky. That's kind of weird considering all the jokes I just made. All right. And now we're in. So I'll be with you in just a moment after I get done with a million screws. Now, if you did everything correctly, when you plug it in, it should not catch on fire. I mean, it may. No guarantees. I got to put the feet seeds in. And uh, while I do this, I just want to tell you, once you put it together, the best way to test it, of course, is playing a record. Um, if you don't have a record, you know, obviously you can just go hook it up to your virtual DJ store, auto track or whatever, and I'll uh, just read to make sure it's not jumping or anything. And then go ahead and let the record play all the way through. Make sure that you know the tone arm doesn't uh, get caught or anything. If you if you accidentally messed up your anti skate, which happens, okay, you can open it all back up and fix it. Or honestly, as long as it's on zero, you'll be good. Because in all reality, you shouldn't have to worry about it. We're gonna uh, put in the top part. So we're gonna grab those four screws, put this in, then we're gonna put the platter up, and we're good. Uh, again, make sure that you test using your, you know, strobe to make sure that it's perfectly locked in. One of the really important things that I want to mention is with the platter, or underneath the platter, you want to make sure this is tightened all the way down. I had one screw that was maybe not even a thread and a half, and this didn't spin right. It kept getting stuck. So you want to make sure that's all the way down. It is very important that you actually set these screws aside and don't screw up. No pun intended. Next part, what you'll notice when we have all this shiny and put together, is that the platter does not match. Now, I'm not too worried about this part, but I'm going to show you, A, how to buff this up and make it look pretty and make all this black into a shiny white. Of course, you can use any color paint you want, but that'll be our next bonus video. My name is Arnaldo Offerman with Master School Dances. On the camera was Johnny. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning the video. MBLD17, hope to see you guys there. Check out the bonus video. It'll be coming up shortly. Good night and God bless.